Hi, everybody. This is MJ, the coding coach, and I am back. Today, we're going to talk about components of a medical record. I've spoken with a lot of students, a lot of people who are in the medical coding industry, and many of them has uh, mentioned to me that they did not see a, an actual medical record until they were on their internship or they received their first medical coding job. So we're going to go through the components of a medical record. So typically, the first thing you're going to see on the medical record is the chief complaint, or CC, uh, as it sometimes is shortened or abbreviated. A chief complaint is a concise statement summarizing the symptom, problem, diagnosis, condition, or the reason for the patient's encounter. Typically, the chief complaint is coded first because this is the reason why you're coming in for your encounter. The chief complaint is usually stated in the patient's own words. An example is patient complains of severe chest pain. The next thing you would typically see um, on a medical record or in a medical record is the HPI. It's abbreviated for history of present illness. It sounds a little contradictory because you're saying the history, which means the past, and then we're saying your present illnesses. So it's in a, you can have a brief HPI or you can have an extended HPI. And let's talk about things that are typically listed in the HPI. It kind of tells what's going on with the patient. So a chronological description of the, uh, of the development of the patient's chief complaint is the HPI. HPI has several elements, and here are examples. The location, which in this uh, specific example, we're talking about lower right leg. Quality, it's itching, burning in the right leg. Severity, we're talking about pain of eight on a scale of one through 10. Duration, started two weeks ago, progressively worsening. Timing is constant. Context, notice after lifting boxes from trunk of car. Modifying factors, sitting down, makes the leg feel better. Over-the-counter meds, it relieves pain. Associated signs and symptoms, numbness in the lower right extremity. So these are things you're gonna typically see in your HPI, the location, the quality, the severity, duration, timing, Context, modifying factors and associated signs and symptoms. So here's an example of a brief HPI example. Patient complains of lower right leg pain, started two weeks ago, has tried Tylenol extra strength, which is over-the-counter medicine, and it has given minimal relief. This is the location, the duration, and any modifying factors. So an extended HPI, extended HPI, patient complains of pain in lower right leg, described as itching and burning, rates pain of eight on a scale of one through 10, starting two weeks ago and progressively worsening. Has tried over the counter, Tylenol extra strength with minimum relief, which means not much, but it helps a little bit to take the over the counter Tylenol. So in this extended, extended HPI, there's the location, the quality, severity, duration, and any modifying factors. Another component of the medical record is the review of systems. Of course, you know we have different body systems, your cardiovascular system. Um, we have your, uh, your uh, urinary system. So there are different kind of systems in our body. I'm sorry, I couldn't think of the system at the moment, but that we have different body systems. So the review of systems is pretty much, a review of systems is a method used by healthcare providers to gather a patient's medical history through a series of questions. A review of history is a comprehensive assessment of a patient's body system to identify any symptoms they may be experiencing. The review of systems is often included in an admission note and focuses on the patient's subjective symptoms. It can help identify potential illnesses or disease states and can also help the provider prioritize systems for further examination. So here's an example of the review of systems. Constitutional, which means um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to say if you have a fever, your weight loss, your vital signs. Your eyes, ears, nose, throat, and mouth. So also when they are negative um, for any signs, symptoms, or things like that, then it's usually going to say negative 
on the medical record. And if they're positive, then they're going to pretty much explain the positive systems. So for an example, in the eyes, if it was positive for anything, it might say running eyes or teary eyes or can't produce tears. Ears, nose, mouth, and throat. So a throat, um, runny nose, um, irritated ears. So it's going to say whatever um, that they're noticing from this patient upon reviewing those systems. So we have the cardiovascular system, respiratory. We have all of these other systems as well, gastrointestinal. So there are all of those systems that the provider is going to check out. Also for the reviewer systems, here's other systems. Uh, we mentioned your cardiovascular, your metabolic or your endocrine system, or your uh, hematologic system as well. Review of systems. So there are three types of review of systems. And I am going to show you an example as well that I got from Agave Surgical Associates uh, as far as wanting to show the example. So again, there are three types a review of system, problem pertinent, which inquires about the system directly related to the problem identified in the HPI. Extended review of system, adds limited number of additional systems. Complete review of system, inquires about the systems directly related to the problems identified in the HPI plus all additional organ systems. So here's, here's an example of HPI. As you see here under constitutional, it says fatigue. And the provider would check off if the patient has it. Um, has fever, chills, sweat, um, decreased appetite, increased appetite, sudden weight loss, sudden weight gain. Then you see the next um, ears, nose, throat, head also. Then you have the respiratory, the cardiovascular, the vascular. Um, you have all of those different systems. Your skin, they're going to check it out, see if you have any rashes or anything like that. Your metabolic, what's your A1C or things like that. Does something in the uh, medical record um, show that something should be checked here in your metabolic or your endocrine? A uh, heat intolerance, excessive appetite, excessive thirst, chronically overweight, chronically underweight. This with your metabolic system. So here's an example of your review of systems and, and the provider would check any of these if they have noticed this during your review of systems. Another part of the medical record, your family, your past, family, social history, PFSH, your past, your family, and your social history. The past family social history consists of a review of these three history areas. Past medical history. Uh, this includes any recording of prior major illnesses. Let's just say you had cancer at one point. It might say history of cancer. And also, if you had um, pulmonary embolism, history of pulmonary embolism. Things in your past medical history that are relevant for your history today goes under this past medical history section of the medical record. It also records any injuries. Um, let's say you had a traumatic brain injury before. You had a fracture of your hip before. These will go under here as well. Any operations, hospitalizations, current medications, and allergies. These are also in your past medical history part of your medical record. Then we have your family history. The recording of health status of, of cause or illnesses and death of parents, siblings, and children. Let's say that neoplasm or cancer runs in your family. That is going to be important for the provider to know under the family history. Then we're going to have your social history. Are you married? Are you working? Um, do you live with your children? Do you live alone? Do you smoke? Do you drink? Um, do you do drugs? All of that is going to go under your social history. And it also reflects and it affects anything that's dealing with the future of your health status. Then we have the physical exam. Now, not only are they going to review the systems and they're going to look at you and they're going to ask you questions, they also do a physical exam. The exam is an assessment of body area or organ systems performed by the provider. The exam, along with the medical history, assists in determining the correct diagnosis and devising a treatment plan. During a physical exam, they're going to look at your head, including your face, your neck, chest, 
including your including your breast, your abdomen, your genitalia, your groin, your buttock, your back, including your spine, each one of your extremities. Also, uh, to a physical examination, the following organ systems are recognized. And here you go, you see your eyes, you see your respiratory, your muscular skeletal, your neurologic, your skin, cardiovascular. You see all of those are going to be a physical exam and they're gonna check you out. So I'm sure you've heard of the level of visit, which is considered your E and M codes, evaluation and management. And as you know, starting in 2021, they um, changed the guidelines for evaluation and management. It is, uh, the codes are selected based on the medical decision-making or the time spent with the patient. A lot of people ask, what is medical decision-making? So medical decision-making refers to the complexity of establishing a diagnosis and or selecting a management option. This is determined by three factors the number of a possible diagnosis and or the number of management options that may be considered. Let's say they, they may manage, um, you have three different chronic conditions and they're managing you with three different medications. So that's a part of your treatment management options. Uh, if, you are, if you are diagnosed with cancer and you have to go to chemotherapy, radiation, that's a part of your treatment option. If you get stung by a bee and they just tell you to get some over-the-counter medicine, that's a treatment option that will be considered low complexity. The amount or complexity of medical records, diagnostic tests, and or other information that may be obtained, reviewed, and analyzed is a part of the medical decision-making. Also, the risk of significant complications, morbidity, and or mortality, as well as comorbidities associated with the patient's presenting problems, the diagnostic procedures, if you have to get an MRI, if you have to get an X-ray, then CAT scan, and or the possible management options. So the levels of ENM, which ENM stands for evaluation and management, because let's say you're going to the doctor's office, that's a part of that's going to be uh, an ENM code used when you go to the doctor's office. They're going to evaluate you, and then they're going to manage whatever they find. So the levels of ENM service recognize four types of medical de decision making. Is it straightforward, low complexity, moderate complexity, high complexity? And I'll do an ENM video as well to go through these um, complexity of visits and to see what qualifies for a straightforward visit, a low complexity, moderate or high complexity. So medical decision making again. You will see a lot of this if you do ENM coding. Type of decision making. If it's straightforward decision making, meaning they know exactly what they're going to do is straightforward. The number of diagnosis, management, and uh, treatment options are a part of choosing the correct level of service. So if it's straightforward, it means it's minimum diagnosis or management options, minimum amount of complexity of review data. And it's going to be minimum as far as the level of visit it's going to be. Low complexity, we have moderate complexity and also high complexity. And if you see under the high complexity column, the number of diagnoses, management option is going to be extensive. The amount or the complexity of data review is going to be extensive as well. So I hope you guys, um, got the got the gist of components of a medical record. Also, I will put in the picture uh, or the photo part of the YouTube option to put an example of a medical record so you can see that with your own eyes as well. So I hope you enjoy uh, listening to the components of the medical record and I will see you guys later. MJ, the coding coach.